Hey, this is Christians Wake Up, and today we're continuing on the lesson, Understanding His Birth, Life, and Death. This is part four of the series, and before we get into the birth of the Savior, because we've been uh, building up to this point on the birth of the Savior, we're going to do just a little bit of recap and go back to a scripture that we read before, um, I believe in uh, part three. And it talked about how the Savior, the eternal son of humanity, came down and he was in the body of whom we know as Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh that he came down and mingled with his body to fool even the angels and even uh, the Lord of hosts, Sabaoth, who thought it was his son. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead right to that scripture. Uh, we're not going to prolong the time. I want to get right into this. So let's go to the Nag Hammadi and let's recap this. It's, it is found in uh, the first revelation of James. If you have the Kindle version, the uh, uh, Kindle version is in page, uh, what is it? 329, 329. So Kindle 329. Let's go there now. All right, here we are. And I have it highlighted right there in orange. That's where we're going to start. It says, when we pass through the region of this archon called Adonias, and I showed the scripture in the uh, previous video about who Adonias is, it's the Lord of hosts or Sabaoth. So once again, it says, when we pass through the region of this archon called Adonias, we then, of course, the three dots mean mix, uh, missing text. We, him. And he was ignorant. So we know that he did not know who the eternal child was during this time. Talking about Adonias or uh, Sabaoth. Then it says, when I passed by him, he thought I was a son of of his. See, he did not know who the eternal savior was. The eternal savior changed his form. So let's get through reading it right here in pink. He treated me graciously at that time as though I were his son. Pausing again. Now, remember, we read about who Sabaoth created. Sabaoth created Israel and the Savior called Jesus Christ. So then we're reading right here in pink. It says he treated me graciously at that time as though I were his son. Then before I appeared in this place, talking about the earth, they were cast among his people. Now, that's what we're going to kind of be focusing on a little bit today is that they were cast among this people because the saviors and when I say saviors, you're probably like, who are the saviors? They're called the 12 saviors whom we know as the apostles. They were cast down to this earth among the people and our Savior, the eternal Savior, did this. He cast their souls down into the flesh of men before birth. So we're going to get more into this because this is also a part of understanding his birth, life, and death. Understanding how the apostles got here on this earth. See, they weren't just randomly chosen. They were chosen because the Father commanded the Son to send them down. And we're going to get into these scriptures that are in, in the lost scriptures. And actually, some of them even in the book of Pistis Sophia. So right here, once again, in blue, it says they were cast among this people. But from that, and then text missing, the prophets did not upon you. So what we can kind of take from that, even though there's text missing right there, where it says, but from that, the prophets did not see the prophets did not know that they were going to be cast down into the body by the eternal savior. So, but from that, the prophets did not upon you. 
So, of course, there's like I said, there's parts missing because this is old text. And uh, when the books were found of the Nag Hammadi and found in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, some of them were because of time were, um, what was it, uh, decomposed. So they got most of the Nag Hammadi and they put it together, but there was text missing, thus the dots in there. Uh, just for those who don't know what the Nag Hammadi is. So the Nag Hammadi scriptures were found in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, and they are the uh, scriptures and the books of the apostles. And this was after the Savior had risen and the Savior wrote about, um, or the, the Savior had them write about what he taught them after. Because when we go into King James, there's not a lot of information about what happened after. We just know that he rose. He came, you know, as a ghost into the house, said, put your hand on my si uh, side. You don't believe me. And, you know, showed himself at the water and, and they were like, oh, that's Jesus. And then the next thing you know, peace out, going in the air and that's it. But no lessons on what he taught after he had rose and said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. See, that's what we want to know is what did he teach them after he rose because remember, there was a whole new set of rules after he rose. So we've got that part down. And what I want to do is I want to go to the King James to show you as well, because remember, we do everything out of the mouth of two and three witnesses. So we're going to go to the King James and show you that the disciples were sent to the world. So we're going to go to John chapter 17 and read verses 8 through 12. Let's go over here. I'm just going to scroll. John 17 right here. So John chapter 17, verse eight says, for I have given unto them, listen, the words which thou gavest me, who gave them his words, the father, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So understand this. It does say for in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But the second part says that whosoever believes in me should not perish. See, he was only praying for those who believe in him so they wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. So that's the reason why in verse nine, he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them, which thou has given me for they are thine. They belong to the father. Verse 10, and all mine are thine and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. See, he said, keep through thine own name, those who thou has given me. See, there are certain people and not just the apostles, but also us who are of his lineage, who believe in him, who trust in him. That's why I said you don't belong to this world. You are not of this world. Even though we are born with flesh in this world, our souls are not of this world. We were created in a different place. And so were the apostles. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, this goes right along with what we just got the reading in um, the Nag Hammadi in the first revelation of James. Let me just scroll right back over here. 
in blue right there says they were cast among this people. See, it that goes right along because they had to come down with them because it says right here, once again, verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept and none of them is lost. See, the ones that got sent down with him, the ones that he sent into the bodies of their mothers. We're going to read all about that. It says, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, there was prophecy about this son of perdition that was going to come down with them, but he was going to be the one that was going to be lost. And he was going to be the one that was not of the 12. There was going to be a new uh, chosen of the 12 who also came down with them, who was in the ministry with them, whose name was Matthias or Matthias. But let's go to the son of perdition. Now we know that it's Judas. We know the things that he did. So let's read Old Testament because it says right here, none of them is, lo uh, is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Let's see the Old Testament scripture that had to be fulfilled of Judas. It's found in uh, Psalms 41. Let's see. Psalms 41 uh, verse 9. This is the scripture right here. Psalms 41 9. It says, yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requit them. See, this was the prophecy about Judas. And then we can also see that person who ate the bread with him and lifted up his heel against him. We're going to go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. Verse 23. Let's be sure of who this, this person is that the Savior was talking about. Verse 23. It says, and he answered and said, uh, said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Right there. The son of man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if, if he had not been born. Then Judas which betrayeth him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. So right there, and then we see verse 26, as they were eaten, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And we know at that time, that's the time when Judas uh, dipped the, the uh, what they call it, the sop, the bread, he put the bread in the water or the juice and dipped it in there and ate it. Now, this also, that prophecy, uh, that David prophecy is also found when they were replacing him with the new apostle, which was, I mentioned before, was Matthias. That's found in Acts chapter one. Let me go to Acts chapter one, verse 16. Right here. It says, men and brethren, this scripture must, must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, listen, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David. Now, what scripture do we read that was found in Psalms 41, chapter nine, or excuse me, Psalms chapter 41, verse nine. That's the um, Psalms of David. And this is what it says right here. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas. So we are 100 percent clear who the son of perdition is. But that son of perdition also came down with the Savior, but he was replaced by Matthias. So it says. Uh, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took 
Jesus. He was the guide that led the Roman soldiers to take the Savior. So we got that prophecy right there. And actually, I'm going to read one more. I'm going to go to, because uh, there's another one in um, Psalms 2 that talks about it. David actually mentioned it twice. I think it's in Psalms uh, 109. That's what it is. Psalms 109, chapter 6. Right here. It says, set thou a wicked man over him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. So we knew right here. And I'm going to go back. Who took his office? Right here. Oh, Acts chapter one, verse 20 says, for it is written in the book of Psalms, what we just read, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric, which was his office. Let me see. Office, see, office of overseer. Let his office, let another take. And then we knew who took it because we have it right down here. The last verse, 26, it says, and they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. He became the 12. Now, the reason I want to mention this is because there were still 12 saviors. So I don't know if, if uh, Judas was ever one of the original 12 but we got we're going to talk about the 12 saviors in this part or the 12 apostles that came with him and also the birth of the savior, because this is understanding his birth, life and death. So what I want to do right now is I want to go to Pistis Sophia, the book of Pistis Sophia, which talks about this. And remember, the savior himself explained that there are some things that he taught the apostles after his death. See, after he uh, died, rose and came back, he stayed with the apostles a long time after that, still teaching them, giving them new word, giving them word after his resurrection, because he now he had power. All power was given unto him. So he taught under a different authority than he taught when he was on the earth before his death. So let's go to the book of Pistis Sophia. Let's go there now. And I'm going to just scroll over here. This is found in the book of Pistis Sophia. And we're going to start with. Actually, let me see if I want to start with. Chapter six. Give me one second. I want to start right here. So this is when the Savior and I think I want to go even. Let me just see how it. I just want to show you how this starts off before we uh, get into it. Right here. Here's where I want to start at. This is chapter four of the book of Pistis Sophia. I, I just want to start right here so you can see the setup of how the Savior came back to them during one of these times. So re remember, he left, but he came back. Uh, we can also find this in the Book of Mormon. After he left, he visited the other 10 tribes and spoke to them and gave them a word. So this is nothing new. So now we're reading about the uh, apostles, the 12 apostles, and when he came back afterwards. Right here it says, as they were saying these things and were weeping to one another on the ninth hour of the following day, the heavens opened and they saw Jesus or Yeshua, uh, Yahuwah, they saw him coming down, giving light exceedingly. And there was no measure to the light in which he was. So we see, I'm not going to read this whole part, but I just want to show you that he came back and he started teaching them. And let me go down because we're going to go through this in a different lesson. Um, let me see. Right here. I'm going to start right here. 
uh, verse five, it says, it happened, however, when the disciples saw these, they were greatly afraid and agitated. Now, Jesus, the compassionate and tender hearted, when he saw that his disciples were in great agitation, he spoke to them saying, be courageous. It is I do not fear. Now, there's other things that happen here. He was he was so bright that they were like, dude, you got to your light. Got to <laughs> you got to put it down. Actually, I'm going to read this part and we'll read up to it. it. Verse six says, now what happened when the disciples heard these words, they said, Lord, if it be thou draw thy light glory to thyself so that we can stand. Otherwise, our eyes are darkened and we are agitated. And also the whole world is agitated because of the great light, which is thine. Then Jesus drew to himself the glory of his light. And when this happened, all the disciples took courage. They came before Jesus. They all prostrated themselves at the same time. They worshiped him, rejoicing with great glory or excuse me, with great joy. They said to him, Rabbi, where didst thou go? Actually, this is a good part to read. Where didst thou go? Or what was thy service in which thou didst go? Or for what reason were all these disturbances and all these earthquakes which happened? So when he came back, he came back with splendor and glory. I mean, making the earth shake, making it be so bright that it agitated uh, people. So right here, it says, then Jesus, the compassionate, said to them, rejoice and be glad. From this hour, because I have been to the places from whence I came forth. So he went back to where he came. Listen, this is the part, and I got it highlighted in yellow. Look what he told them, though. From today onwards, now, I will speak with you openly from the beginning. I'm going to pause there, actually. The Holy Spirit is having me have me go here. Let me see. Right here. I'm going to read this part. And he spake many things unto them in parables. So remember the Savior always spoke in parables and everything was a parable and you had to understand it or he had to give not you understand it he had to give you the understanding of the parable so he always spoke in kind of dark speeches or in a parable and then later on he would kind of tell the disciples what he meant or what he said and was like yeah this right here the seed is this and this is this and th this seed is the good ground and this is the bad ground and this ground over here does this and he had to tell them after the fact see right here he doesn't have to do that anymore. He's resurrected. Now he says in yellow, it says from today onwards. Now I will speak with you openly from the beginning of the, let me scroll, of the truth until its completion. Now, here we go. We're about to start and get to some good things. It says, and I will speak with you face to face without parable. See, that's what we just got to read. And he would always speak in parables. Now, this is something, and, and that's why I think they hid a lot of these books, um, Piss of Sophia, Nag Hammadi, the, um, the uh, Lost Scriptures. I believe they hid it because they don't want us to know Anything except the parables. Cool. We, we, hey, we can give them the parables. They can they can think about that all day and, and, and dissect it all day. The information after he rose. No, nah, we don't want them to have that. We're going to seal those books, hide it, call it Apocrypha, New Testament Apocrypha, which most people don't know. They've hit a lot of the books of the New Testament. Um, We're going to destroy a lot of the books to the point to where the disciples or the apostles have to hide the book, hide them in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, until they're found in this day and age, and we get them. All these things they did to keep the true message of the Savior out of the hands of regular people like us, which is why they have the archives in the Vatican. All right, so I'm going to start right here. 
and I will speak with you face to face without parable. I will not conceal from you from this hour onwards anything of the things of the height and of the place of the truth. For I have been given authority. That's why I tell you it's important to get into these books. I know some people are scared to get into them. If you're scared to get into them, stick with the King James Version. But for those who want to know the absolute truth, I'm a person who wants to know the absolute truth of how everything works and find a witness with it out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, because there should be other supporting scriptures, regardless to if it's in the King James, if it's in the Nag Hammadi, if it's in the uh, pseudo picker for Old Testament, no matter where it's at, there should be corresponding uh, scriptures. There should be at least at least two witnesses. And we're finding them already. So now I want to get to another part. We're going to I'm going to skip this part right here because I want to get to this part right here where it says rejoice. And this is let me make sure I'm tell you chapter seven of the book of Pisces Sophia right here in yellow. It says rejoice and be glad and rejoice still more that it is given to you that I should speak with you first from the beginning of the truth until its completion. Because of this, indeed, I have chosen you, listen, from the beginning. See, I told you the apostles were chosen from the beginning through the first mystery. Rejoice now and, hold on, be glad. Because when I entered the world, I brought the 12 powers with me. There's your second witness right there that he brought. Actually, no, that's your third witness. Because we already read in uh, John chapter 17, verses 8, 8 through 12, that he sent the uh, apostles or sent the uh, apostles to the world. So right here is a third witness. It says, because I entered the world, I brought the 12 powers with me. When we go back to the uh, first revelation of James, that's in the Nakamati, right here, where it says, then, then before I appeared in this place, they were cast among this people. Right there. That was our first witness. Second witness was that, what, like I said again, was John chapter 17, verses 8 through 12. Then once again, right here in the book of Pisces Sophia, because when I entered the world, I brought the 12 powers with me. As I told you from the beginning, which I took from the 12 saviors of the treasury of light. See, the 12 apostles were from the 12 treasury or the 12 saviors of the treasury of life, a light, excuse me. And let's read right here. According to the command of the first mystery. Now we'll get into that first mystery in another lesson. These now I cast into the one. I should have highlighted this. Let me just highlight this. Um, I'm going to just highlight it to right here. Let's see, highlight. So it says, these now I cast into the wombs of your mothers when I came into the world. That's the same thing we read over here. Once again, then before I appeared in this place, they were cast among this people. Wow. So let's get the reading at the top left. These now I cast into the wombs of your mothers when I came into the world. And it is these which are in your bodies today. For these powers have been given to you above the whole world, which it which makes sense on why uh, during the time of his ministry, when he sent them out. And he sent them two by two and told them to heal the sick, raise the dead, the same thing that uh, he was doing. And they came back with the report. 
that the devils were subject unto him unto them because they were from the treasury of light. They had that light power in them. So that makes a whole lot of sense on how he could just command them to do so. And then they did so. Amazing. It, it makes me think of even us um, who are his, who have that light inside of them. Like I said, I was used to um, use his power to raise a little kid from the dead who had got um, crushed by a, a truck, one of the old conversion trucks, and didn't know any of this information, had no idea about this information. But now everything makes sense on how I was able to do that because light dwells inside of me, the same as it dwells inside of you. Remember the scripture says, and, and see, it's just not me and it's just not them. Uh, let me go to the scripture. The Holy Spirit's having me go here. Light world. See, we have to know who we are right here. Matthew chapter five, verse 14. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. See, he's saying we have been set on a hill. We light the whole world up. See, a light doesn't shine from uh, below. It shines above. That's why when you have a candle or you have a light or you have street lights, they put it above to give light to that which is below. So when we walk this walk, we are to let our light shine so that men can see our good works and glorify our father and our savior. That's what we're supposed to do. That light that's inside of us, that light power that we're reading about right now should be shining among men and men should be able to see that light power that's within us. Let's go back to it. Into the world and it is these which are in your bodies today. I'm reading right at the top where it says for now. For these powers have been given to you above the whole world. For you are those who are able to save the whole world so that you should be able to withstand the threat of the archons of the world. See, this is the reason why he could not um, allow them to be born the regular way. Remember, we've read about how, um, uh, what was it? How souls were created. The, the, um, what was it? The I'm trying to think of the name, um, artificial, the artificial spirit or soul. I can't remember right now. I think it's the artificial spirit that the world rulers always create people with. It's the reason why the savior had to come a different way. It's also the reason why the savior could not be born of sexual intercourse. He had to come through a, a miraculous birth. See, most people don't understand that, that he had to. He had to come of a miraculous birth. He couldn't come through the normal process. Otherwise, he would also have that artificial spirit inside of him. Ah, Let's get the reading. For you are those who are able to save the whole world so that you should be able to withstand the threat of the archons of the world and the sufferings of the world and their dangers and all their persecutions which the archons of the height will bring upon you. For I have said to you many times that the power which is within you, I have brought from the 12 saviors, which are in the treasury of light. For this reason, I have indeed said to you from the beginning that you are not from the world. I also am not from it. So this is the difference between the Savior, Jesus Christ, whom Sabaoth created versus the eternal Savior, the, the son of humanity that lives in the eternal realm, how he came into the body of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahawashai, Matzah, how he came into his body and he merged with him so that it was it was all a plan for the salvation of the world. Those who were to believe in him and believe in his ways and walk in his ways, not for the whole world. See, God does love the world. Once again, let me just say it again. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. That, see that, that is there. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish. So what about those who don't believe in him? The judgment is coming after that. See, he loved the world, those who love his son and believed in him. But those who don't, we know what happens to them. We, all we got to do is go to Revelation. We see what happens to them. Ah, all right. Let's read this next part. We're going to start right here. For all men who are in the world have received souls from the power of the archons of the Aeon. See, that includes us because we're born fleshly. Uh, some of us are, um, well, we're, well, we're just born, it's just born that way. But we know that we are from the light because, uh, when, uh, let me see what message was that that I did. Ah, oh, you're about to have me look it up. I need to look this up. Give me one second, just so I can tell you which lesson to um to look at. One second. Let's see if I can get it up. I wish I would have had this up, but let's let's see. Hold on, I'm looking through my uh, lessons right now. I want to give you the right lesson because this goes along with what this is saying. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Nope, nope, nope. Not that one. Let's see, we got the... Which one was it? Oh, okay. I know which one it was. Okay. It's, it's two of them. If you listen to the, or go to the series, it's called the imperfect church. So look at that one first. And then after that, look at the imperfect word, because you'll learn where we actually came from, especially in the imperfect church. What it's talking about right here, like it says right here in yellow, the power, how, however, which is in you is from me, but your souls belong to the height. I have brought 12 powers of the 12 saviors of the treasury. See, that's talking about the apostles. Now, this part right here where it says for for all men who are in the world have received souls from the power of the archons of aeons. In that video, the imperfect church, it shows you how, yes, we do have souls from here, but it shows you how we were rejuvenated and how our souls were changed over into light and how we are actually from a different age and a different aeon than from this world. So look at that lesson. It goes right through the scriptures and it'll show you just how we are. It's called the imperfect church. You'll understand while it's called, why it's called the imperfect church once you watch that. So let's get through reading right here. The power, however, which is in you is from me, but your souls belong to the height. I have brought 12 powers of the 12 saviors of the treasury of the light, taking them from the part of my power, which I received at first. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. The Holy Spirit is just showing me something. So you see how it says right here, taking them from the part of my power, which I received at first. It just I don't know why this popped in our spirit, but it had to be the Holy Spirit. You remember the lady with the issue of blood who said she just said, if I may touch the hem of his garment like he did, he wasn't trying to heal her. And she went and touched the hem of his garment. And he said, virtue went out of him. Power went out of him. See, he, our savior was the power source. There was power inside, like almost like a, a power plant. And she pulled from that power plant and got the healing that she wanted just through her faith. Just through her faith. See, that's how we are 
sons of God through faith and works. She did faith. She said faith first. She had her faith. She said in her mind, if I can just touch it, faith. See, it's always faith and works. So if anybody tells you anything different, it's always faith and works. First, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. That's faith. She didn't stop there. Then she put work into action. She went through the crowd knowing that she could be um, really killed for coming in there because she had an issue of blood. But she walked in there and touched the hem of his garment. Faith and works. That faith and works caused her to be healed. But it just showed me too the same process that she had is the same process really to become a, a, a son of God or a daughter of God. Confess with your mouth. That's faith. The Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart. You shall be saved. But see, after that, it comes uh, works. You have to walk this walk. So you can't say I'm a child of God or I'm a son of God and then stay in sin. That sin may may be may dwell in you. You have to work. But that's how we become the sons or the children of God. I'm pausing right here because the Holy Spirit got me going somewhere. That's why in Revelations chapter three, verse nine, I'm not going to tell you this lesson I'm going to do because I'm doing another lesson. I'm going to just read this verse right here. Revelations chapter three, verse 10. It says, because thou has kept the word of my patience, the word of his patience patiently waiting his arrival, but not just patiently doing what the world says. Remember, it says um, in the scriptures, uh, one of the servants said, my master delayeth. He went and started killing the people, started doing wrong and stuff because he's like, my master delayeth his coming. See, that means that the works were wrong. And even his confession was wrong. He said in his heart, my master delayeth his coming. That's the faith. Then his actions were against what the Savior said. What happened to that guy? Nothing good. But those of us who know that he's coming and have the word of his patient, patiently waiting for his arrival, that means not just believing that he's coming, but also believing and doing works that show that we believe that he's coming, even though it seems like it's being delayed, even though it seems like it's far away. We still do what he says. When the world says do wrong, we do right. When the world says sin, we do. We live uprightly because we keep his patience, the word of his patience. Verse 10 right here, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That goes right back to that John 3, 16. See, God loved the world, those who loved him. Once again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him, believed in the word of his patience, shall not perish. Right here in green. I also will keep thee from the hour of, of temptation. But what happens to the rest of the world? They're going to be tried. They're going to be tested. Because they didn't keep the word of his patient. That was just a side note that the Holy Spirit wanted me to go to. So let's go back. Ah, yes. Let me go back to here first. We're about to get into some very good stuff. So the power, however, which is in you is from me. But your souls belong to the height. I have brought 12 powers of the 12 saviors of the treasury of the light, taking them from the part of my power, which I received at first. And when, listen, and when I entered the world, I came to the midst of the archons, archon, excuse me, of the sphere. And I took the likeness of Gabriel, the angel of the aeons. And the archon of the aeons did not recognize me. I'm a pause. 
So this is other the other. Remember, this lesson, this whole lesson is called Understanding His Birth, Life and Death. Now we're getting into a little bit about his birth. It was he who was the angel who came and spoke to Mary. He was in the likeness of Gabriel. And I'm going to see if I can. I don't have this in my notes at all. But I believe it's also in the uh, Nag Hammadi. Let me see. Gabriel. Um, let me try to find it real quick. Um, let's see. I can't. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I can't find it right now in here, but there was, I'll, I'll try to get it for the next lesson. Actually, that's what I'll do to where it talks about how Gabriel, he came in the form of Gabriel and talked with Mary. Um, it's in what I think it's in the lost scriptures. And I don't, I don't want to look for it right now. It's going to take a while to find it, but right here it says, and I took the likeness of Gabriel, the angel of the aeons and the archons of the aeons did not recognize me. See, the whole time they didn't recognize him because he could change his forms, just like we read in the Pseudopigrapha Old Testament in the uh, earlier lessons of this uh, understanding his birth, life and death. But they thought that I was the angel Gabriel. Now, it happened that when I came into the midst of the archons of the aeons, I looked down at the world of mankind. At the command of the first mystery. Now we get into some good, uh, more good stuff. I found Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, before she had conceived him. Before she had conceived him. Before she had conceived him. And I cast into her a power which I had received. From the little jail. Now, we'll talk about jail later. Just put that on the burner for now. Put that on the shelf. I'll, I'll talk about him later. The good. And you know who jail is. You just don't know this name, jail. But as soon as I say his name, and actually, let me just say his uh, name. Metatron. Um, Enoch, after his ascension, after his exaltation and ascension. Uh, um, what's the word? Um, ascension. After he was blessed because of his his goodness he's called little jail um in here the good who is in the midst so that he should be able to be to preach before me and prepare my way and baptize with water of forgiveness now this is not enoch that he's talking about he's just said he received from him from little jail or enoch or Metatron, which, whichever name you want to use right now. We're going to find out who it is right here. Now, now that power was in the body of John. And again, in place of the soul of the archon. So in the body of John the Baptist, there was a, a soul that was replaced inside of him. Which he was due to receive. I found the soul of the prophet Elias or Elijah. Ah, remember, we did a lesson on this and let me uh, try to find the name of it. Days of probation. Actually, that's I know what it is. Days of probation. Look for that lesson. I did a lesson on it about um, how re people don't understand that reincarnation has always been in the scriptures. It's just that the church never talks about it, nor do they go to those scriptures. I'm talking about in the King James Bible. So you can go right to the lesson called Days of Probation, or there's another one. Actually, I did two of them. It's called The Immortals Among Us. And it talks about the reincarnation and those who are among us who were immortal. You'll see that there was more to the Bible than what the church has let off. So I'm going to read again right here in um, yellow. I found the soul of the prophet Elias in the aeons of the sphere. 
and I took it in and I took his soul again. I brought it to the virgin of the light and she gave it to her paralympters. They brought it to the sphere of the ache of, of the archon, excuse me, and they cast it into the womb of Elizabeth. So now we see not only did he cast the 12 apostles into the wombs of their mothers, he also brought an extra person with him, Elias or Elijah, and cast him into the womb of Elizabeth. And see, people don't, that's why I don't like religion, because people don't even believe what the Savior says, even though he says it. Hold on, let me, let me, let me just show you. Let me just go to it. Even the apostles didn't believe what he was saying right here. Oh, this actually, this is even good. This is really good. Matthew 11, the Holy Spirit took me right to this. Matthew 11, chapter 10. It says, actually, hold on. Now, let me let me start right here. Matthew 11, chapter seven, it says, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. So listen to this. What went ye out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Now remember, Elias was a prophet. Look what he says right here. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now remember in the Old Testament, it said, and then say my messenger, it said, I send Elias. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, let me see if I do Old Testament. Oh, good. Malachi chapter four, verse. Five, it says, behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. See, it said it right there in the Old Testament, in the in the prophecy. I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. See, before I'm going to send Elijah, the prophet, not John the Baptist, Elijah, the prophet. We go right back over here. The Savior said the same thing. Let me go back right here. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger. His messenger was Elijah, the prophet. But it says, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. I did a whole lesson on this and got, probably going to do another one. Verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Listen, and if ye will receive it, this is a lot. He, he tells you, let me highlight this. He tells you straight up front. This is Elias. He said, if you will receive it, if you will receive it. See, most people won't receive. Most people won't believe what the Savior says. He's like, look, I'm trying to tell you. This is literally Elias or Elijah. This, this is him. If you receive it. And it says, which was for to come. Now, even the disciples didn't believe it. Let me go back over here. Elias. None of this stuff is in my notes. 
And oh man, let's let me go back. Uh, where do I want to go? Where's it at? I think right here. Yep, right here. Matthew chapter 17, verse 10, it says, and his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? See, they were looking for Eli. They were looking for the person say, my name is Elias. My name is Elijah, the prophet. That's what they were looking for. Verse 11 says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias or Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias or Elijah is, is come already. And they knew right here. And they knew him not. See, it was him. It says, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed or they willed. Likewise, shall also the son of man suffer of them the way same way I'm, he's going to they did whatever they wanted to him. They're going to do whatever they want to me. But he was already there. Then verse 13, then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. They finally understood that they were talking about John the Baptist, that he actually was Elias. This is going to explain it more right here in yellow. I found the soul of the prophet Elias in the aeons of the sphere, and I took it in and I took his soul again. I brought it to the virgins of the light and she gave it to her paralympters. They brought it to the sphere of the archons and they cast it into the womb of Elizabeth. But the power of the little jail or the power of Metatron or um, Enoch, he of the mist and the soul of the prophet Elias were bound. Listen, were bound. I should have highlighted this. Were bound. Uh, no, that's good. Were bound in the body of John the Baptist. See, his soul was bound in the body of of John the Baptist. So the body was of John the Baptist. The soul that was in him was Elijah or Elias the prophet. You doubt it now at the time when I spoke to you because John said, I am not the Christ. Because you're thinking, well, why didn't, how didn't he know that he was Elias? Here's the reason why. He said, John said, I am not the Christ. And you said to me, it is written in the scripture when the Christ shall come there will come Elias before him and he will prepare his way. But when you said this to me, I said to you, Elias has indeed come and he has prepared all things as it is written. And they did to him as they pleased. And when I knew that you did not understand what I said to you concerning the soul of Elias, which was bound in John the Baptist, I answered you openly in speech face to face saying, if it pleases you to accept John the Baptist, he is Elias of whom I have said that he will come. So he showed this right here. Now, let's go to this part. Let me make sure. Let me see. This is eight. Give me one second. OK, yep. I want to read down to. I'm just looking where I was. OK, it was the next page. All right. We're going to get to verse eight right here. And it says, Jesus continued again speaking and said, now it happened after this through the command of the first mystery. I looked down again upon the world of mankind. I found Mary, who is called my mother, according to the material body. I spoke to her in the type of Gabriel. And when she turned to the height towards me, I cast into her the first power, which I had received from the Barbello. Now, if you haven't seen the video about who Barbello is, go to the video called Barbello. 
and you'll understand exactly who Barbello is, which is the body which I wore in the height and in place of the soul, I cast into her the power which I received from the great Sabaoth, the good. So then that's how you get the uh, mixtures. I was about to go to the scripture. I don't need to go to it. Uh, the one we read in James, in the book of James, the first revelation of James, how he thought it was his son. And then he sent his son down to the earth. So that's how they mix and says he got his power from the great Sabaoth, the good. Remember, Sabaoth, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, is good. He is Sabaoth, the good. So he's working in conjunction with him, even though Sabaoth didn't know his in, his plan. He still worked through Sabaoth. So right here from the great Sabaoth, the good, who is in the place of the right. And the 12 powers of the 12 saviors of the treasury of light, which I received from the 12 servers, which are in the midst. I cast into the sphere of the archons and the deacons of the archons and their ministers thought that they were souls of the archons and the ministers brought them and bound them in the bodies of your mothers. So he used um, he fooled them. Pretty much. They thought that they were putting in the artificial soul or artificial spirit. He didn't know or the demons of the archons did not know that they were putting in the containers of light from the treasury of light. The 12 saviors. In yellow it says they bound them in the bodies of your mothers. And when your times were completed, they bore you into the world without there being souls of the archons in you. So I'm, we're going to stop. I think we're going to stop. Yeah, we're going to stop right here. So once again, they bound them in the bodies of your mothers. And when your times were completed, they bore you into the world without there being souls of the archons in you. So this lesson was called Understanding His Birth, Life, and Death, Part 4. So what we learned in this one was how the Savior took the 12 apostles, a.k.a. the 12 saviors from the containers of light or from the treasury of light and put them into the bodies of their mothers. Also, we also learned in this one how the Savior came down in the form of Gabriel. So when we see the scriptures of Gabriel talking to or the angel talking to Mary in the King James Version, it was actually the Savior. And we also learn even more about John the Baptist, who, a.k.a. is Elijah, the prophet, how prophecy actually was fulfilled. And Elijah came, but the world only saw John the Baptist. They did not know that that was him, that, which is probably why they thought he was a fake, because they were looking for the actual Elijah, the prophet, the, the physical form of Elijah, the prophet, not the spiritual form that was placed into the body of John the Baptist. Like I said, man, a lot of stuff, If when we just read this stuff in church, it's just religious, a lot of religious things. But when we actually go through the scriptures, go back to the King James and read the stuff, you're like, wait a minute, this, it makes sense now. And you see things that they just kind of go over where the Savior actually said, no, this, it really is John, it really is Elias in the body of John the Baptist. Y'all just don't believe it. And they just couldn't believe that it, John the Baptist was actually Elijah the prophet. So I just wanted to show that to you. There will be one more lesson on this uh, understanding his birth, life and death. We're going to get into uh, some more really good things about it. But I wanted to do the series and I shouldn't say I wanted to. The Holy Spirit wanted to do the series to explain how the Savior, the eternal Savior came into this world because this is going to play into some things that you've heard before about it was a joke. And if you if you want to uh, look at that, you can look at that video. It's called It Was a Joke. But there were some things that was a joke about his crucifixion. And we're going to get into that in the next lesson and bring this to a close. So thank you for listening. I hope that you uh, got a lot out of it. I hope that you were edified uh, and built up from this and learned something new about the eternal Savior, about uh, his process and 
his way so that we can understand what we're supposed to do on this earth, understand how we're supposed to think and understand how we're supposed to live. Hey, this is Christians Wake Up. With that said, I'm out.